I'm gonna call the manager. Ta da ta 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 da ta 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 da ta ta. What the manager is hiding on the toilet. Da 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 da. I need my eighty dollars back. It is a lot of money. Ta da 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 for a pole chainsaw. Ta da 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 from Home Depot. Ta da 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 da. The manager cuts him off. Ta da 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 da. Bro, you disturbed my toilet moment. Ta da. We ain't giving you my money back. Ta da 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 da. Home Depot isn't giving you the money back. Ta da da. They said it's not enough money to claim the money back. Ta da da da. That makes a lot of sense. Ta da 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 da. Ta da 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 da. Ta da da. The customer keeps asking about the manager. The other guy just keeps cutting him off. Ta da da. It doesn't rhyme. It it doesn't matter. Ta da 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 da. The toilet moment was disturbed. Ta da 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 da. You are so customer. Ta da da da. Ta da 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 da. You disturbed my toilet moment. Ta da 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 da. I like to take a break. Ta da da. All day long. Ta da 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 da. After all, I work for Home Depot. Ta da 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 da. And they don't give me any credits, extra credits for. Giving you the number of the manager. Da 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 da. They fire me instead. Da 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 da. So I'd rather take a toilet moment all day long, and nobody takes any accountability for anything. Da 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 da. Peace out. Okay, so that was. That was a completely improvised manager song, <clears throat> which I have been singing now for the last two hours, just randomly through the house, because Paul has been on the computer literally all day long, trying to call the manager at Home Depot. I want my eighty dollars back. The the pole chainsaw never arrived here. It was delivered to your house, to the front door. We don't. The, there's no front door. There's only garage. Bro, that must have been delivered to the wrong house here. We ain't giving you the money back. It's too much. That's eighty dollars. Too much money to give you back. The customer says the same thing. It's too much money to. Just give up as a customer, right? Do I need to call the bank? Yeah, that's what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna ha have to call the credit card, and the credit card will fix that for you. So, which she did, and they did. Thank goodness. Thank you. Okay. So, but you know, he never got paid. For a whole day of bureaucratic legwork, <laughs> calling for managers all day long. I mean, that's that's pretty insane. Is that nobody taking any accountability for anything? You know, bro. You know that was really the last time we bought anything from Home Depot on the internet. The lady at the store at Home Depot. She was nice. She said. I would have fixed that for you, but you bought it on the internet, so now I can't. I'm not. I can't do anything about this. So okay, if they can't do anything about this, then pretty soon people can't buy anything from Home Depot on the internet anymore, and that will not be. <clears throat> that is not gonna make Home Depot that much money, right? So. <clears throat> but I, I, I was washing dishes, laughing about this. I had to cough, you know. Oh my gosh! Like, oh, oh, oh God. 
I get so much mucus in my lungs when I laugh. Oh my, that's crazy. So, and then Paul got mad at me. Why are you laughing about that? <laughs> why are you, why are you having such fun with this? You know, this is crazy. This is like, they shouldn't be doing this to the customers. No, definitely not. There's the disco light, looks good. So, I finally installed one of my spot lamps here next to me so now it is my artwork is illuminated and it looks good i absolutely love it totally love it that's great so it was nice in the garden i made a nice garden video relaxing and everything and so right now I just want to be chilling, you know, and I already ate too much Toblerone. I guess that's what co made me sing the song. I'm gonna call the manager. So Toblerone made me make that song. You can write him a letter and say, thank you, your Toblerone made Nicola write the manager song. No, not write, just improvise <laughs> so but anyway i have nobody to talk to here okay and no internet i have to wait to upload all of this later when we get to the california house and i'm looking forward to seeing the horse again the horse was very nervous the last time we were there i I'm really worried about the horse, you know. I've been talking to Paul about the situation and when I haven't seen the horse in like three weeks or so because we were at the other house longer and then I see the horse again and the horse always tends to have very specific like abrasion marks on him on the side like as if something has rubbed hard like a saddle with whatever something sticking out under the saddle something that shouldn't be sticking out like a screw or whatever and and I saw that I saw this the hair was really shoveled up and like rubbed raw or something, you know. And I was really worried about this. When I first met the horse, I don't know when I first met the horse, in the summer of, summer of last year, I guess, the ho I saw several times that the horse had actually sores on him also in the in the, the same area on his shoulder and also on the side and even on the, the back thigh I saw some sores and one time he had a sore in the face where there was just that actually looked like a burn mark or something and I was really 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 worried I was really worried about this I was thinking what what if he's being abused you know and <clears throat> so I've been talking to Paul about this now for the last couple of days and I keep saying gosh I wish I could just go there at night and cut the, the fence open with a wire cutter <coughs> and bend the, the bend the fence back and tie it up to the to the to the other part of the fence and have a wide door for the horse to to get through easily and to wave the horse over with apples and put a head harness on the horse. Uh, we don't have any here right now, 
but we could use I'm just this is just theoretical I'm just thinking about this because my mind is on that okay a lot <coughs> I feel like t taking one of Papa dog's chest harnesses and somehow tethering that around the horse's face and, or the neck or put just just clipping it around the neck and then putting the leash, the dog leash on it and just leading the horse out of there, you know. Leading the horse down the road there and just we don't even have a horse trailer. And just walking the horse while Paul drives the van. Just walking him and walking him and walking him. And just doing that, you know, like walking through, through just side roads, you know, not on the main road, of course. And then Paul following us and maybe we will have to walk a couple of days like that because walking distance from the horse to here would be at least three days depending on how how, how long you're walking so I, I, I'm out of shape so I, it would take me probably more than a week That'll be good exercise, but at some point the police will catch up with us and they'll say, we're not going to call the manager here. You're going to go straight to jail. <coughs> and if I can point out that the horse was abused, they're not going to care. Most of them are not going to care. And that's how the situation is. So there's no accountability in the world. There is no compassion except for some really, really rare cases. And Paul said, you're going to go to prison if you do that. And he too. And he doesn't want to go to prison. And I don't either. So I can't even, what can we do when we're in prison, right? That's even worse than this prison here. So at least here I can have my artwork, I can paint, I can make videos and so on. Paul can give me a foot massage once in a while. He, he does that. It's very nice, very relaxing. I can go in the garden. I can't do that in prison. I can't see the horse when I'm in prison, so at least this way you know, I can see the horse off and on and pet him, give him apples, make his life a little bit easier, a little bit nicer. So if I wasn't there, then he wouldn't even have that. He wouldn't even have the 15, 20 minutes of Paul and me coming there, giving him apples, talking to him, petting him, saying nice things into his ear. No, he wouldn't even have that. It just He would just have the, the perpetual desolation, and loneliness, bleakness, and then occasional abuse from someone from someone who does not know how to train a horse. Someone who may get frustrated and lets it out on the horse. This happens so many times in the world. And that's why I make videos about this and talk about it and, and say over and over and over again, don't let your frustrations out on an animal or child or anyone. Okay. I wrote an entire book 
That one is not on Kindle. I put that on Blogger. I wrote that in 2017. I finished that book, I think. Some, somewhere in 2017. And I put it on Blogger. And I, I even forgot the blogger name. Nicola Dandelion, I believe. So I forgot now. I, I used to use Redwood. So Kenny called Kenny's name. Kenny Kenny's last name was Redwood. I gave him that name. So and then I called all of us Redwood or Redwood Forest. Because this year used to be Redwood Forest and in, in long time ago, like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years ago, this, this was all redwood forest. And then people came in and they locked everything down. But this was spared from the ice age because of the redwood forest. So the redwood forest with those gigantic trees, that, that, that fauna of gigantic redwood trees that created its own rain so it protected itself almost like a greenhouse but in a good way you know like a, a rain forest type of greenhouse really nice so blogger yeah I have my book on that the AG, AGI product, project, the AGI project, that's the name of the book. It's about a little over 100 pages long and a couple of people read it. I had it, on, I was talking to people about it in philosophy groups on Facebook and there were two people from the Singularity a Technology groups that read it. two Swedish guys from two guys from Sweden they're very nice they don't just ignore someone when someone says would you read the, the book they're nice they are so 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 nice and they say okay sure I will take time and read your book and both of them loved my book and why why did they love it because they have compassion they have deep compassion that's why why they love my book and they didn't just say that they loved it because they probably feel the same way as i do you know sad and frustrated about the situation on earth okay with most people not having any compassion, nobody taking any responsibility for anything, nobody feeling responsible. As Jitta Krishnamurti pointed this out already. Okay. And me suffering with the animals and not really being able to do anything, having to petition to psychopathic legislators who just laugh about it, about the petition. That be like petitioning to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. They don't even look at it at the petition. They don't care. And that's the case with most politicians worldwide. And so out of this, you know, I'm an activist and and my petitions or most petitions, you know, it seems like an enormous struggle. But when there's a lot of people signing petitions, we get something done. Things have gotten accomplished worldwide. We have, okay? And in the case of Vladimir Putin, you know, he was completely on board with our activism. So, you know, we brought things to his attention that he may not even have been aware of in his country. He immediately took action for the animals, so he's a great person, very compassionate. Not very many politicians or political 
chancellors or presidents or whatever they call them chairs <laughs> that are that are very that that are thinking for the wellness of animals and people they're thinking most of the politicians and people in charge are thinking about what what will come out for them you know, what kind of vested interest benefits will come out money and so on and legislative vested interest governmental seats that they can get a hold of to manage to maneuver the legal system towards their own pro profit benefits that's what's on most people's minds it's very sad and out of this sadness and frustration I wrote that book the papa was still there the papa in his former life was a writer uh, and he inspired me Papa's presence inspired me to write. I'm not a good writer like he he was, the David Foster Wallace. But, you know, I'm an activist writer in that way. Kind of more like I'm kind of like more like I would say bulldozing type of writing style. David Foster Wallace was more diplomatic in his writing style, but in a in a very eye-opening way, which pissed a lot of people off because he did call the kid by the name. He called out the issues, but in a very, very, very humorous and playful way and in a diplomatic way and in a in a sweet way but it still pissed the egos off of course and the ego doesn't care if it is called out in a playful diplomatic or friendly way or a rude way you know the ego doesn't want to be called out There's a lot of people that felt called out by David Foster Wallace's box and they they would go how dare he finds fault with people like that he thinks he's better than anyone else well that's what I get too of course but it's funny how the other people wouldn't even comment on the book at all they wouldn't say anything they acted like they never read the book that's the easier route, right? So, but yeah, but I, I went at it with that book. I really did. I just let the whole, I let my fantasy run wild. Really, 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 with AGI robots, everything in it. The Hillary Donald drone that I created. Ah, <laughs> that's a good one. The Hillary Donald drone. That is that is amazing machine is that okay so that's that looks like a zeppelin <laughs> and it flies like that too in any direction and at each end of that zeppelin is a half sculpture one of Hillary Clinton but blown up big really big like blown up three times the size of Hillary Clinton <laughs> and, <laughs> and at the other end of the Zeppelin is the half sculpture of Donald Trump also blown up three times the size and they can go either in Donald's direction or in Hillary's direction but I talked about this before in a video but that video is on my Kindle Fire 8, which then had compatibility problems with YouTube because Jeff Bezos and Google didn't get along. 
so that never got uploaded to my account but I kept that video in my Kindle because this is this is a beautiful memory because I was sitting upstairs with my papa dog oh god a dog and he was on this love seat here I had that upstairs and I had I, I bought him a fold out bed which was meant to give him a step because Papa was short and he had to have that step to get on the couch the intermediate step so I was sitting oh usually sitting on that step looking up to the Papa I was literally looking up to the Papa dog and he was on this couch with his big hu humongous legs sick tree trunk legs and feet on that on the armrest and he was looking down to me with a smile and these big leather ears and with the wisdom bone on his head that's a wisdom bone he was very wise it's an angel soul more advanced than I am and I oh and in that vid that's a beautiful video how I talk to the Papa dog and how I talk about that that AGI project book with my Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump drone and I, I keep watching that on and off and and it was Paul and we both think about the Papa dog how gorgeous he was and we also watched the videos of Kenny of course I didn't have the, the Kindle there yet when we had Kenny I put all the Kenny videos on my old accounts my old like Daisy Cypress Daisy Cypress Tulip Garden. That's one of my really old accounts. Uh, I have a lot of Kenny videos on that. And I always like to use plant names. So the Buddha made a video. That's my f absolute favorite video of all videos that I've ever made. That is star because of Kenny, Kenny Redwood, the blue god in dark form. That is the best video in the whole world. The Buddha made a video. I think that was Daisy Cypress Tulip Garden account if I'm not completely I don't know one of those old accounts that it is on and I saved it in my in, on my new channel on the videos the video list my favorites so it's on that so I don't wanna I don't ever want to want this to get jumbled up and where I can't find it anymore but I'll always find it because I know I know the kind of stuff I need to put into the search of course so you can also put it into directly into the Google search but I made a video and you can put in Kenny Redwood with four D's and the video will come up I'm sure so that's my absolute favorite video. The, the the second favorite video is the one that I have on my Kindle. So that I made with the Papa. Those are beautiful memories. So now I live for memories for my dogs. So this is the longest time we've ever been without an animal. Both Paul and I, both of us, in our life. We've always had an animal. I mean, we have, we have stray kitties here, and we have the kitty at the other house. The kitty comes in sometimes, but I can't really say that that cat is really our cat. I can't really say that is my pet. No, 
No, she's free. She's she goes to the other lady next door, and that other lady is very very sweet. She feeds cats, and the cat hangs out there most of the time. You know, and then when we come. Then the cat comes over to say hi, and we feed her, and sometimes she sleeps on the futon couch. And who knows what kind of cigarette particles she has on her body, and that is always a problem for me. And then it's difficult to wash a cat, they don't like to be washed. Then you have to start with a litter box, you have to keep the cat in the house, then she can't even get out anymore. So, traveling with the cat and the van, I don't know, it's kind of difficult, all of this. We would have to put a chest harness on her. I don't know if she would like that. So, that's a lot of trouble. So, no, she's not really our pet. But I love to see her. I love to pet her. And we made that cat house for her that is on, on the porch at the other house now. So when we're not there, Paul put some memory foam in it and old t-shirts. And so she goes in there sometimes and, and sits in that and, and stays warm. And then we saw another kitty who was in that same cat house. And when we got there, the other kitty got scared and he thought, oh, oh, I'm in their cat house now. Uh, they didn't even make that for me. They made that for her. No, I'm in here and they see me and they, they will, they might get mad. So he, he jumped out real quickly and ran off. But I saw him. He was in that cat house and he what happened was because he is it's like a Persian with long black hair and it was raining hard and he made that cat house really wet on the inside. Paul thought a cat peed in that but I think it's because of the rain and the long wet cat hair soaking up that memory form and then kitty didn't want to go into it anymore <laughs> and he also made it real muddy in there too so Paul is gonna have to put a new t-shirt on that memory form but you know it's nice to have a stray kitty and not really stray but I think people have left that cat behind when they moved away and she seems to be an older cat so and she seems to be neutered or at least she is I don't know too old or neutered so she's not she's not mating with one of the males out there and that would be even more complicated. My gosh, with that. I was worried about that too. What if she has a litter there and then what? What are we gonna do then? And we would have to bring the kitties to the animal shelter. Most of those, they don't even take cats. They're so overloaded with cats can't even take any more cats in. It's all sad. <sighs> it's all sad, man. Terrible. Terrible situation. That's why I that's why Paul and I stood up for mandatory spaying and neutering and it was on the ballot where people could vote for it. And I urged everyone in the animal coalition group to to please vote for this. None of these people would. I feel like punching them for that. And then what, you know? We can't tell people what to do, but then you're gonna be we're gonna we're gonna have an overpopulation of cats and kittens. And then what? They're gonna be suffering, they're gonna be on the street, they're gonna be kicked around. Okay. Is that what people want? Homeless animals who suffer? No, it's not cool. No, not at all. These are important subjects, 
You know, it's very important to talk about this, very important to bring this up. He wanted to rescue a dog and he looks like an American bully, medium or large, I don't know, he could be a large American bully. At the, at the animal shelter, they would not hand the dog over to us. Because Paul told that guy, uh, at another time we were there, he told him that, that Paul told him that he's signing animal petitions. And as soon as he said that, that guy didn't like us anymore. That guy's a hardened right-wing Republican working for the Department of Agriculture. He's for cattle ranching and for animal exploitation, so he's against us. And they had, they couldn't come up with a reason why they couldn't give us the dog. It's still under investigation. And that would go on indefinitely. And he, and that redhead guy, the 400 pounder, he just looked at us with his medical face mask on. He looked at us with, with total, like, like hatred and chip on his shoulder and contempt and like he's like he like he enjoys that that he's giving us the runaround and they're not giving us the dog and then who knows what happens and I can just pray to the blue god Blue God, please protect that baby, that that poor, poor dog. Someone brought from from L.A. all the way up here. A good lady, good Samaritan, brought him all the way up here. And then we are here, Paul, Paul and I, to take him in, and they wouldn't let us take the dog home. I mean, that that, that was really heartbreaking. That was last summer. That was very heartbreaking for me. But, you know, since then, I decided this is, I, I don't even want to risk, I don't even want to adopt a dog. You know, if I, if I really honestly ask myself, you know, it's a, it is the right thing to do, you know, if you don't have a complete preference of a breed, please go and adopt a dog. Try at least, you know, try it. You might have to take a lawyer with you because some of those people in the dog pounds act like total assholes. I read, we read an, a r report from someone else about this. This happens now because of the pandemic that more people have time for a pet, a dog. They want to go and adopt a dog. So there is uh, a higher demand of people wanting to adopt a dog. And now the medical industry, and this is the worst part of all, they come in and they, they do the highest bidding for dogs. And then the animal shelter, as greedy as people are, they will hand the dog over to an animal testing lab instead of a good home, a good loving mother and father. That's the level of corruption that I'm talking about. That makes me cry. Okay. So I pray to the blue God to protect that baby, that baby do um, American bully dog, okay. and the other two that we wanted to adopt as well. And all of them, and all dogs, worldwide, protect all, all dogs and all beings. Okay. I say that every day. I say that particularly when I'm going to bed at night, when I'm trying to sleep. I look out the window. I look into this, the night sky, and I say, "Blue God, please protect all beings and Paul and me."
And I often cry. What else can I do? I think about the situation and then I cry. And I don't know what else to do. So when I wrote that book, The AGI Project, I really let my fantasy run wild. It starts out with an Arnold Schwarzenegger formed, shaped robot. The Terminator, of course. You know, I mean, it's who else other than the that Terminator, you know, that that would come to mind when you create something like this. Everyone knows the Terminator. And Arnold, he is really fantastic. Uh, he really is. His films are amazing. Every film he, he plays in is amazing. And then he, he wrote some himself, and they are even more amazing. He is amazing, Arnold. He is super intelligent, great businessman, compassionate, loving, loves animals. He was really... I would say he was the absolute best governor that California has ever had. I want Arnold back. Yes, he should say, I'll be back for California. He should say that and he should do that. Yeah, I want you to run again for governor if, if you can, you know, if they can get... I think they can. They can get reelected multiple times. We desperately need Arnold Schwarzenegger back. And we desperately need Governor Gavin Newsom out. So, Arnold has it all. He cares about animals and he's for justice on all levels. And he's for prosperity and he's for cleaning up the house. <laughs> So, amazing guy, amazing man, angel soul. Okay. So, yeah, I know it. Amazing. I'm a total fan. You know. So, I made the first robot into his image. And the robot goes, I know it. He goes out into Death Valley. And he lifts his arms up into the air and like a Joshua tree in the desert, and like he's thanking the blue god, and he stands like that for, I don't know, five hours, maybe four hours, in the sun, in the brightest sun, and he's recharging his batteries, and when they're recharged, he runs really fast. He runs to the next animal situation. He runs, I think that, that was the first one that I mentioned. He runs over to the wild horses in Nevada and Reno and he protects them. He destroys all of those wild horse traps that the cattle ranchers set up. That's what I feel like doing too, but I don't want to go to prison. And, and then he just has a whole bunch of assignments throughout the entire book, and it goes very quickly, everything. And then I talk about the Hillary Donald drone, and they're, gonna, they're going to Asia, they're going to Hong Kong. That Zeppelin type of drone is going to Hong Kong and showing up in front of the window of a high rise building of Ben Gertzel's office. And Ben Gertzel looks out the window and there is the Hillary Donald drone and Hillary looking in the window. Hey, Ben! <laughs> like that. We're here, you know, we're here to help. Okay, and 
and they have a lot to, a lot of work there to do so yeah so and then you know an army and an entire army of Nicola dandelion robots you know, that's that, that's been on my mind a lot so I, I had this fantasy of being molded into a thousand robots they are every one of them identical looking to me with the fat and everything the wrinkle no euphemization no no improvement allowed no every wrinkle bag you know the puffed stuff <laughs> to the chin flabby and all everything the way that is my belly exactly like that I mean you also you know you have to blend into the crowd of course so maybe the crowd they will get suspicious if someone looks too much like one of those animation babes you know like flawless totally completely flawless right with no belly fat and everything like completely athletic like one of these terminator ladies that runs real fast in stiletto shoes <laughs> like right um <laughs> no 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 that would be too suspicious no you have to blend in at walmart <coughs> You have to be trailer mama, you know, like, I'm, co I'm coming with good intentions. Oops, I didn't tell them I'm a robot. I might do nice things to all of these people when I'm a robot. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are coming. <laughs> We are marching on. No. Don't make any mistake about that. So it's gonna be happening. An army of Nikola robots, fat and everything, with dorky clothes, with ski pants on. They don't get bladder infections, but they st they will still get that same exact outfit. <laughs> <laughs> with the jogging pants underneath, with the Baffin winter boots, oh, those Baffin winter boots. Well, I couldn't run very fast in those, but the robots will. They will run very fast with all the fat and everything. That's not going to slow them down at all. They won't have any kind of heart problems. Sometimes I have to, uh, I have kind of like shortness of breath. I catch my breath like this. They don't have any of these problems. Okay, they don't even need to breathe. <laughs> they don't need a man either. Trust me on that one. They may play around like, they know how to play around, to blend in. Okay. to not be suspicious by the crowd and then when the time is ripe they will instead of doing the lap dance they will grab the man by the shirt sleeves by the collar <laughs> and lift them up with one arm with one arm lift them up high in the air and they will go oh what's going on here <laughs> no I couldn't do that I'm strong but I could not I can't lift someone like Max <laughs> up in the air like that that wouldn't work no way so no, I'm not a threat. Uh, if you see me at Walmart, you can still laugh about me.
and have a blast. Okay. Ha 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 ha! Trailer, Mama. So making a video. And but in my novel, uh, that is a different situation. Okay. They are going out into. They make thousands of those. They go out into the whole world. They clean up shit in the world. And they make more of themselves <laughs> very quickly because they have an intelligence that is thousands of times the intelligence of. Let's say even Elon Musk. So you can just do the math and just extrapolate how intelligent those robots are going to be. Okay. And they see the whole picture at once, the big picture. They're not going to torture anyone. So that's not, that's not what's going to happen. The so called Terrans, you know, by the the singularity community, they call the people who are afraid of robots, they call them Terrans. They call them Terrans because Terra means Earth. The Terrans, and kind of also sounds like they're terrorized too, that they kind of fits. They're actually, they're, they're, they're in terror about the robots coming. Oh, they're gonna finish us off, right? We're all gonna die. Mm. No, we're not all gonna die. Okay, that's gonna be the modern day, <sighs> the last stand. Okay, that's what that is. Okay, the Bible predicted this. Oops. The Bible thumpers are the Terrans. They are absolutely the most afraid of the robots. And the reason why is because they know that the way they have lived their lives was not according to ethics or compassion. Okay? The last stand is coming, baby. Okay, it's coming. I'm not the judge. I'm not going to be your judge on it. I'm just a prophet. I'm I'm just someone who wishes for that. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen, but I wish for it so so deeply. And then I let it go. So I am in tune with the infinite. I'm I'm the love activist. So that's what I am. I'm just a love activist who wishes for that. And I don't know what, what the future will bring, but I don't know. I have the feeling this is going to happen. So this is just an intuition that my AGI project is going to come true. That's what that's what I'm thinking. Because I already see all, all the clues that all the clues of things moving in that direction. Okay. It's happening. Noah is here. The Elohim. The Elohim Noah, the Elon Noah, the Elon Musk. Okay. Peace out.